Lord God, on this day of Pentecost, send your spirit upon us as individuals and us as a community, as your church. May our lights shine out in this world. May we be seen as different. May others wonder what is going on in the midst of your people. So to begin today, I have to kind of go back to something that those who only watched online didn't get last week. You know, after I recorded the sermon for last week, we had the shooting in Uvalde, and that, that changed the direction of where I was going. And last week really ended up being a a statement about, you know, yes, there are times in which our faith can be seem small. It can be seem like it's not got much to offer to the world, but it's a little bit of light in the midst of the darkness. In this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And I know that sometimes it feels like, especially now, you know, there was a time in which People can look back and say, well, the church was everywhere and it was big and it was full of all ages and, you know, everybody attended and it just seemed like it was. It had power, it had worth, it had value because, you know, people didn't do anything else on Sundays. And we can look back at that time and and wax nostalgically for what it could be. But... There was a lot that was that went into that time, and there was a lot that's been lost in that time. And I think that, again, we can feel small. We can feel like we can't do it on our own or that there's not enough. And I think this is a day that the church needs to come back to year after year after year because it is that day where you have the disciples gathered together. They're there in the upper room. They're hiding from those who have power in the world. And they say, we don't have enough. We don't know what to do. We can can shuffle the chairs around. We can make things work for for us. But we don't know how to go beyond, beyond this room, beyond this place, beyond these shut doors. And then, in God's own way, a little bit of the kingdom comes and the wind begins to move and the fire comes down from heaven and it's messy and it's got to be a cacophony and noise when you have all these different languages of, of Parthians and Elamites and Latin from Rome and Greek from throughout the rest of the empire and you know Arabic and all these other languages that are thrown together in this one space, in this one place as the disciples are all in their own way trying to tell about what Jesus is doing and people hearing in their own languages. And whether it's the disciples speaking or the the act of the Spirit working in that space between where the disciples' words are and what gets heard by the ear, God's at work in this space and God's at work in this place. And even in that time, there are people who say, well, it's foolishness. It's people who drunk too much at 9 o'clock in the morning. But Peter gets up and he speaks. And what I really want to focus in on is this little piece from Joel and what he says on that first Pentecost. Because it's not about one person having the light. God says, I will pour my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams even upon my slaves, both male and female. In those days, I will pour out my spirit. And they shall prophesy. That everyone will have a voice to contribute. There's a scene in the book of Exodus where Moses 
has been bearing the weight of everything. You know, he's carried the light for all of Israel. And on advice from his father-in-law and with consent of God, God's going to pass some of his spirit to 70 of the other leaders. And so that happens, and there's two who, of course, this happens, you know, that when the time comes, they get up late, or for whatever reason, they don't go with the rest of the elders with Moses up the mountain, and they're there, they're still there in the city, and they start prophesying, and somebody comes to Moses and says, Moses, Moses, you have these people who are prophesying in the midst of the city to try and protect Moses, to try and shield him, because, you know, you're the one who bears light. It shouldn't be all these other people, and Moses' response, I think, is telling would that all God's people could prophesy? Would that all God's people could bear the Spirit? Would that all God's people would have something to say in this time, in this place? Would that all God's people would be light bearers? Would that all God's people would hold their lights and say, this is a little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. So we're going to do something on Pentecost that we would normally do on Christmas Eve when we gather together in person. Now I can't do this over the the video. It's impossible for me to pass a flame through the video to you over the internet. If you want to light a candle at home, I invite you to do so. Light this light. But we're going to pass the flame around here like we would on Christmas Eve, you know, as we sing Silent Night and the candles fill up the sanctuary with light in the midst of the darkness. You know, one candle by itself doesn't make much difference. to get 20 or 30 or 50 or even 100. And all of a sudden, these little lights of ours, and they're not lights that we created. They're lights that God has placed among us. They can shine. They can shine. They can shine. And part of, part of Pentecost is gathering the flock together. You know that there are people gathered there from all the nations that are known at the time, from Rome to Libya, Egypt to Arabia, Crete and Parthia, and all the rest all those who have risen and fallen as empires, all those where cities rise up and where farmlands are tilled, all those languages that were, you know, according to the story of, of the Tower of Babel were broken apart. Now's a chance where they begin to become back together. And God is at work doing something in the midst of the darkness gathering in the midst of the brokenness, healing in the midst of the separations. And that little light continues to shine, continues to shine, continues to shine. And these little lights of ours are the lights of God which go out into this world, this world that God loves, this world that needs to know that light the world that needs to hear this gospel of love. The world for which Christ came and the Spirit still moves over. So let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine.